Most Linux breakages are not malware. They are you running the wrong command as root. Today I will show you how Linux really protects your system. Users, groups, sudo, passwords, tuning profiles, and how to decide which process gets the CPU first. I will use real commands with real outputs. If you have ever typed sudo and prayed, stay with me. In Linux, a user is not just a name, it's a security identity. The human label is the username, but the kernel cares about numbers, the user ID. Here an example, my user ID is 1000, group ID is 1000, everything you start, shells, apps, background jobs, runs as your user ID. That's how Linux decides what you can read, write, or execute. Files are owned by a user and a group. If you notice here, colon 3 is the user owner, colon 4 is the group owner. Processes run as a user too. Username shows in output, but scheduling and permissions relay on the numeric IDs underneath. A group is a team of users sharing access. Each has a name and GID, group ID. Here in this example, group 01 has the users user1, user2, and user3. Primary group, one per user. New files use this group by default. Supplementary groups, extras that grant more access. When we run the command ID against the user, user1, we can see that this user can read files allowed to any of these groups, user1, wheel, and group01. Root, user id0, can do anything. That's powerful and dangerous. Best practice, work as a normal user. Elevate only when needed. SU space dash space username switch user needs that user's password unless you are root. SU space dash full root login shell loads root's environment. sudo space command run one command as root authenticate with your password and it is locked. In the first example, I use the command sudo to run user mode to lock the user 2. Then I switch it to user 3 and I run the command sudo tail slash var slash log slash secure. User 3 is not in the sudo's file. This incident will be reported. sudo dash i root login shell sudo dash s root shell without login scripts. Save sudo configuration. Always edit with vi sudo command. Let's see some examples. Give full root via group. The first one per user specific command as another user and passwordless for automation only handle with care to create a user use the command user add space and the username to give a password to the created user use the command passwd space username defaults live in slash etc slash login dot diffs user id ranges aging rules on modern systems, regular users start at user ID greater than 1000 unless you specify dash U. To modify an existing user, we use the command user mode. Here in the first example, we give a full name for the username. If we want to change the shell used by the username, we use dash S and the path to the shell dash g small to specify the primary group for the user when using dash a g capital is critical because if you didn't add the letter small a it will wipe out all the existing groups that user is a member of user mode dash l capital and the username to lock the user the user will not be able to log in anymore. To unlock the user, we use dash u capital. Deleting users and avoid data leaks. When using the command user del space username, that command leaves home directory. Files now owned by old user ID number. When using user del space dash r small space the username removes account plus home directory. From time to time, try to run this command to find any files on your system which is not owned by any existing 
user or group. If you delete without dash r small and later another user gets the same user ID, they inherit those files. Many organizations lock accounts instead of deleting to avoid that. Password policy and slash etc slash shadow. Why slash etc slash shadow exists? Long ago, password hashes lived in slash etc slash passwd, which every user can read. Attackers could copy those hashes and try dictionary attacks offline. Linux moved hashes to slash etc slash shadow, readable only by root, so normal users cannot grab them. The slash etc slash passwd file user account data is stored in that file. For local accounts, each line represents one user in this format. Username x as a placeholder for password. Actual password hash, as we said, is in slash etc slash shadow. User ID and then primary ID. Comment field, usually full name or description. Home directory and login shell or slash spin slash no login for disabled logins. Now, what one slash etc shadow line means? Here for this example, user one. The first field is the username. The second field is the password field. Algorithm plus salt plus hash. Special cases you will see here. Explanation mark hash or leading explanation mark add the hash password. Means account locked password authentication blocked. Asterisks, no password set, cannot use password login. Empty field, no password, very dangerous, effectively passwordless. This number 2357, last password change, days since 1970, January 1st. Zero, minimum days before user can change the password again. 99999, max days, Password is valid. Empty never expires. 7. Warn user this many days before expiry. The next field should contain days of inactivity after expiry before the account locks. Field 8 contains account expires on this day number. Empty means never. The last field reserved, usually empty. Now let's look at the hash anatomy in field 2. How to read dollar sign ID, dollar sign salt, dollar sign hash. Dollar sign Y is associated with YesCrypt, which is a modern password hashing scheme designed to be more resistant to attacks, derived from the Scrypt family. This is documented in the man pages. The middle part is the salt, random per user. Last part is the hash. Salt means Two users with the same password still get different hashes, killing rainbow table reuse. Show your system's idea of password aging for a user using the command chh-l and the username. Lists last password change, password expires, minimum, maximum, warning, inactive, and account expires. Let's set a clear aging policy with chh using the command chh Dash M zero dash M capital ninety dash W capital seven dash I capital fourteen and the username. What each flag means dash M small space zero minimum days user can change anytime dash M capital ninety maximum days must change by then dash w capital seven warn seven days before expiry dash I capital 14. After it expires, lock the account if password not changed in 14 days. To check the result, run the command chh-l small and the username. Keep in mind, changing aging rules does not change the current password. It changes when it must be changed. Time math is UTC under the hood. Display dates, follow your local time zone. Let's set account to expire 30 days from now using the command chh 
space dash e capital date command and the username to check the changes use the command ch age with dash l small the dash e capital and the date sets account expiration date not just password on and after that date logins will fail even if the password itself has not hit max age force a password change at next login no excuses use the command ch age with dash d small zero and the username dash d small zero sets last change to today so pam treats the password as immediately expired on next login the user must set a new password lock versus unlock and what locked actually does lock via user mode prevents password authentication using the command user mode dash l capital with a username this prefixes exclamation mark to the hash in slash etc slash shadow so password authentication fails existing open sessions are not kicked the lock hits new password logins to unlock the user use the command user mode with dash u capital disable interactive shell logins for service accounts when an account should exist but not get a shell use the command user mode dash s and slash spin slash no login attempting ssh or tty login shows this account is currently not available no login blocks shell access it does not automatically block imap ftp web app authentication if those services use the same credentials use your service config and pam to restrict those let's take some practical examples in the first one company policy rule out new standard rotate every 90 days warn a week ahead lock 14 days after expiry we have three users alice bob carol we apply the new rule by using the command chh in the second one you have a contract will end next month we use the command chh to expire the username and then we use user mode to lock the user using user mode dash l capital third example you have a suspicious activity and you need to force reset for a user then you use the command chh-d0 at next login they must set a new password review sudo logs meanwhile to create service account with no shell use the command user add with the arguments dash r and dash s dash r to create a system account dash s to specify there is no shell using no login dash m capital means no home for more details grab the pdf copy it has all the info we covered in this video and more the link in the description performance is not just hardware red hat enterprise linux fedora suse enterprise linux and open suse include tuned profiles that set kernel system control and the driver parameters for your use case to install and enable tuned use the command dnf install tuned enable the service using the command system control enable static tuning applies a set of kernel and system parameters when the tune d service starts or when a new profile is selected these parameters stay in effect until change it providing consistent performance settings regardless of system activity dynamic tuning adopts system settings in real time based on current workload the tune d daemon continuously monitors components such as cpu storage and network then adjusts parameters to improve performance under load or reduce power usage when idle to enable dynamic tuning open the file slash etc slash tuned slash tuned dash main dot conf and make sure these variables have these values dynamic underscore tuning equal one and update interval equal 10 to pick a profile for your use case use the command tune add list to check what is the recommendation from tuned use the command tuned add recommend and then to set the profile use the command tune add profile to check what is the active profile right now use the command tune add active common profiles 
balanced safe default power safe battery first throughput performance maximum io and cpu throughput latency performance network latency snappy response no mercy on power network throughput saturate network cards desktop quicker user interface virtual guest or virtual host vms or hypervisors to create or overwrite profiles in slash etc slash tune d not slash usr slash lip slash tune d to turn off tuning use the command tune add off and to check the status run the command tune add active you should see no current active profile ever started a build and your desktop stuttered fix it with nice and re nice to see priority and nice in top command pr colon kernel priority mapped value in i colon nice value minus 20 higher priority 19 lower real time tasks display special pr values normal tasks show pr around 20 with nice reflecting the user visible adjustment real time processes do not have nice values in i appears as dash you can use the command ps to list the running processes and tasks on your system to see the priority value and nice. Start a job at lower priority. This command will inherit nice equal zero. We nice the command. It will add plus 10 to the nice value. We can pass an explicit value to the nice by using dash n and the value. To adjust a running process, use the command re nice. Keep in mind, root can decrease nice value and raise priority. Normal users can only increase nice on their processes. In top command, press R and enter the PID that you want to change the nice value for it. And remember, as a regular user, you can only increase the value. So here we can enter 20 and the nice value change it. On idle systems, priorities do not matter much. Under load, lower nice wins time first, but CFS or completely fair scheduler still shares fairly. CFS is the default Linux process scheduler for normal, non-real-time tasks. Its job is to share CPU time fairly among all runnable processes based on how much CPU time they have already used, their nice values, and other factors. If this clarified users, groups, and performance for you, drop a comment, like, share, and subscribe for Deep Dive Linux that's actually practical. See you in the next one, and thanks for watching.